Hello everyone, my name is Mark Potts. I'm a video reporter here at the Los Angeles Times and baseball is back with an asterisk, maybe. Uh, I'm here to talk to our crack baseball team about what that means for the Dodgers and the Angels and baseball in general. And uh, Bill, if you want to start, uh, kind of explain in 50 words or less how we got here. There was an agreement the owners and players made on March 26th. Three months later, they decided to live by it. A lot of grief in between. How many words do I have left? That was pretty uh, good. <laughs> that, was, that was good, yeah. Um, I mean, how do you how do you kind of see things between the, the, the players and the, the owners after after everything went down? Like, do you think this was – do you think this is going to be blown over soon once baseball starts back up? How is this going to affect the seasons to come? This is a video, right? Special effects? Um, there's going to be a collective bargaining negotiation next year, and this really poisons the well. And I got to be honest, if they had reached an agreement this time and the owners didn't have to mandate a season, there would still be a pretty contentious collective bargaining agreement next year. The salary structure has grown way out of whack because the owners have run roughshod over the players because the players got their butts kicked in the last collective bargaining agreement. So the players are trying to figure out how they can get more money. The owners are obviously trying to figure out how they can not pay more money. Uh, that would have been the case no matter what. So I guess coming attractions, if you will. Maria, uh, have you heard from anyone uh, from the Angels uh, organization? Like, is there, is there excitement in the air? Like, are they finally happy to get back to playing? Well, they haven't really, the Angels haven't made anyone available to us yet um, because they're still waiting on everything to be finalized. I mean, I would imagine that there's excitement, but uh, it's such a, I mean, it's a weird season for all the teams, obviously. I think it's particularly interesting in the Angels case because their their general manager is uh, in his last season under contract. So I'm sure he's excited to kind of see even just in part what uh, his new team will look like with the additions of Rendon and um, to Ron and Bundy in the rotation. The Angels expect to have Otani now as a two-way player again at, since for the first time since, you know, late 2018, or I guess maybe, I guess it would have been this time in 2018 was when Otani went down as a, just a designated hitter for the most part. Jorge, uh, you know, Mookie Betts is finally gonna make his debut in a Dodgers jersey. I'm sure, I'm sure he won't get questions about if this is going to be his only 60 games, 60 plus a postseason maybe. Uh, have you heard anything on on that front or how the Dodgers are approaching all this? Yeah, I, I, the few players I've talked to, people with the team, man, you know, people, coaching staff and all that stuff, they're excited. They want to play. Um, you know, whether Mookie actually plays a game, I think we're, you know, still a little early to assume that this is going to be taking off. Um, and whether we get to ask any questions is another matter. Um, You're such a downer. Yeah. Why can't you just say yeah. baseball's back? I've seen it tweeted. Because baseball's it's back. It's because happening. It's not. Baseball's not back. <laughs> Twitter at, says it's yeah, back. At, you know, in a few hours here, they're supposed to have a – I guess it's supposed to – the league is supposed to hear from the from the union over whether they're – you know, the protocol and all that and whether they can meet in spring training by July 1st. So, um, I, there, are less, there are still a few steps. Obviously, this is the biggest steps behind us. But, um, you know, when it comes to the Dodgers, uh, one of the things I'm sort of fascinated to see is this team's kind of built for the, you know, the long haul. It's a, it's a, it's a team with a lot of depth, um, you know, when it comes to the rotation and offensively. Um, they built their team around 162 games, winning that portion, and then getting into the playoffs for the sprint. Now, this year, I think they're a little better for the sprint because they got Mookie Betts. Um, Mookie Betts was acquired specifically for October for the sprint. Now, the sprint's going to be a little longer, right? 60 games and then the playoffs. So, they're probably a be they're better built for this kind of season than they were last year just because they had that sort of top-end talent. And they brought in David Price, too, who will be a will be a nice boost. Um, but it'd be fascinating to see, you know, who knows, maybe the Diamondbacks will get hot or the Rockies or the Miami Marlins will get hot. And, you know, in a couple of months, if they're in the world series or something, it'll be, it'll be weird, but, um, the Dodgers still the favorites in that, in that division. I'm just interested to see if like, you know, if they go off to a slow start, um, you know, can they recover? I always, uh, it always seems like the angels start off hot. So I'm still hoping for an angels Dodgers world series now. Uh, yeah, I mean, so, <laughs> is there is there kind of an excitement in the air about how weird it could get? Like you said, the Diamondbacks. I mean, the Marlins are typically terrible. Maybe the Marlins come out hot. Like this could be as negative as I want to be. I'm also like thinking this could be awesomely weird. It could. 
Yeah. I mean, if you would have gotten the expanded playoffs where they would have had 16 teams get in and you would have had a team that was, you know, 10 games under 500 or something get in the playoffs, uh, that'd be weird. But the whole thing's going to be weird. And as much as people want to talk about, well, it's a short season and it's not a legitimate championship, uh, I think those people should go find Tommy Lasorda and ask him if he thought the 1981 championship the Dodgers won, which was in a strike-shortened season that was about 100 games, or whether he considers that illegitimate. And close your ears, but I'm going to think after the F-bombs, it's going to be no. Whether or not it's legitimate will be up to historians later on, but one thing to consider, too, while we're – talking about how serious the players are going to take this. I mean, they're going to be playing 60 games in a very short span of time. There's going to be very little rest to it. So in the end, like, they're not going to think that this wasn't a serious endeavor that they went through. It could be – and I can't tell you off the top of my head, like, how many days they'll have to rest, but they'll have very few days of rest. And it will really be a sprint by the end of it. And they'll surely be ready for that break. Yeah, I'm super interested to see uh, who shows up at spring training in good shape, who shows up in not good shape. I'm going to assume the guys who have something to play for when it comes to free agency and arbitration and all that will come in nice shape, great shape. There'll be people that, like Mookie Betts. I mean, he's a free agent. These guys have a lot of, a lot of players have, have something to play for personally. Um, you know, whether some other guys maybe don't take it as seriously, um, that's going to be super interesting to see. But, you know, at the end of the day, these guys are all, you know, they all want to win you don't want to go out there and get embarrassed. So it's going to be a, I think it'd be taken seriously. You know, we, Bill mentioned an 81 Dodgers. I mean, a 99 Spurs, no one remembers the, the lockout that shortened that season of 50 games and, you know, they won the championship. So, um, you know, we'll look back on it. It'd be kind of wacky, but it'll still be cool to see, um, you know, baseball is sort of different, you know, it won't be the long grind marathon season. It'll be something a little different with more at stake pretty much every night. I want to add too, um, it'll be fun from the roster construction perspective as well with the, you know, the, the taxi squads that each team is expected to carry. I mean, you'll see prospects who probably weren't expecting to come up this year, if at all, until maybe the end, potentially have an impact early on. Um, in the Angels case, Joe Adele will be on the top of that list. Another outfielder of theirs, Brandon Marsh, who suffered an injury in spring training, but is recovered now, or at least I believe he's recovered now. So, it, it's that that part of it will be fun and also just in-game strategy do you the starting pitchers and you know the beginning are you going to let them go a little bit um you know how, how quickly do you have to pull the plug um you know how quick short is that leash early on is it four innings five innings you let them go because the season's so short you need to win that game there's gonna be a lot of cool like little wrinkles in here that we're not used to well awesome well i appreciate you all joining me to talk about this uh you've heard it here for first baseball is officially back uh, you can quote Jorge that it's officially back. <laughs> We're having baseball. Uh, I look forward to updating this video in the afternoon when um, it gets voted down. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll see you all in a few hours, maybe, uh, and we'll redo all this.